This comes with a lot of stuff. Safety glasses. Gloves with neoprene kind of palms and thick rubber backs. Stretchy. One size fits all. This strap has some nice clips on it, but uh, nothing to clip it to on the saw other than just loop it through the handle and clip it to itself. Personally, I don't like a strap swinging around that could get caught in the chain. Comes with this shield that attaches with these two small screws. Looks like a brake. I wish it was a brake, but it's just a flimsy plastic shield. Wish it was a brake. They include a file for sharpening. This Phillips head wrench and an oil bottle. One set of batteries. One goes here, one here. Just one charger. I understand they come with two now, so that's better. And two chains. 16 inch bars, the beast. That's what makes the saw look impressive to your neighbors from across the street. Use this wrench to take the cover off. There's been a lot of confusion. The instructions that came with mine were for the old chain tightening system, but they've updated it with a better system. Hopefully they've updated the instructions by now. It used to have a screw in the front to adjust it, but now they've got this with a knob with a gearbox, and it runs this pin back and forth on a screw. When assembling it, the saw needs to be laying on its side the way it is so that pin will hang straight down so it can line up and drop into this hole. The chains come in very tough, nice poly bags, and they're incredibly sharp, so you want to be careful. I should probably be wearing gloves. See, there's the cutting edge there. You want to make sure it's going away from you over the top of the bar coming back towards you on the bottom of the bar. Just got a sprocket end. Nice. Not all saws have that. Get the chain fed into the channel all the way around. It's all seated nicely. Get it over the two studs. Get the chain nest it over the sprocket, hold it tight, and this is where it gets tricky. you got this socket has to fit over this stud, and the back of it has to nest down against this shoulder. It doesn't want to sit in there nicely, so you got to finesse it a little bit, and you got to get that pin hanging straight down and lined up with that hole, so you want to adjust it so you're pretty close. You have a little leeway where you can slide the bar back and forth to get it to line up. Put the nuts on loosely. Still have some adjustments to make. Every time you adjust that chain, you're going to want to use the wrench to loosen the two nuts. You're going to pull on the bottom to see how much slack you have, and then tighten this clockwise. Getting better. Pretty snug. Oh, we're not nested into the channel. Back it off. Get it seated properly. It's looking pretty good. As it's used, the chain stretches, and as soon as you start running it, it gets hot, and that expands it, so you're going to constantly be adjusting it. Never touch a hot chain with your bare fingers. It will burn you badly. Too loose and it'll jump the sprocket, too tight and it's hard on everything, and it heats the chain up even more. Once you get it where you want it, Snug it down. Let's put the batteries in, see if it spins. Chain has enough oil on it to uh, run this test, but we still have to put oil in the reservoir. It's got battery level gauges on each battery, and then also one on the body of the saw. I assume is telling you both batteries. A 
feels powerful and it's relatively quiet. And it states to please add proper amount of lubricating oil before work. It is forbidden to idle the oil pump for a long time. Well, there is no pump that you can idle. It's an auto oiler apparently, but they don't tell you much about it. This gasket falls out of the cap. I'm going to lose that quickly. So I can fill this oil bottle, which makes it easier to get it into the tank. But the hole in the bottle is almost as small as the tank. So I'm just going to use this pump oiler and fill it up. And we're topped off. Now it looks like there's a vent hole punched, but the punching didn't come out. So I push that out. That won't stay in there. I might have to add something to uh, make it stick. And I like to see some oil flung off the uh, tip. If you use a good chainsaw oil, it's got an additive that makes it cling, so it won't fling off as much, but this isn't a good chainsaw oil, so I expect to see some splatter. There's some coming off. Not as much as I'd like to see, but it is oiling. I let it sit for a day, and as I expected it would, a lot of oil leaked out, but that's the nature of these beasts.